In this series, we will cover the many ways HEADS enables you to discover better product designs faster by automating the exploration of your simulation models. Today, I will be showing you how to use the Excel portal with HEADS to quickly set up an optimization study and allow HEADS to modify your design. Excel can add an extra dimension to your design space by adding a costing model or by acting as a standalone sophisticated mathematical model. To start, here I have a math model based inside of Excel. And you can see clearly that I have two variables, x and y, shown here in fields b1 and b2, as well as an equation in b3, which is the sine of x divided by the sine of y. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how HEADS is going to manipulate this Excel file, and it's going to read the results from that Excel file. Basically, what you're going to tell HEADS is this right here is the cell that's, that corresponds to the value of x. And if I change that value of x, you'll see that my result also changes, same as if I change my value of y. And so what you want to do is you want to define different ways. There's two different ways to define how HEADS looks at these different fields. And the first of which is to actually define a name inside of Excel. And then when HEADS parses the file, so when it looks inside of the file, it's going to see this already defined variable name, and it's going to pull it out automatically. And that's what's called auto-tagging. So I'm going to show you that option now. To do that, you would simply click on the field of importance. In this case, it's going to be B1. I'm going to go up to the name box in the top left-hand corner, and I'm going to change it from B1. I'm going to type X, and I'm going to hit Enter. And now you can see that this field is defined as the variable name x. I'm going to do the same for the response, and I'm going to call that, instead of b3, I'm going to say, we'll call that answer. I'm going to leave y unchanged because I also want to show you how you would tag a variable without using the auto-tagging feature. If you wanted to tag an array, for example, a column of data that you wanted to use inside of HEADS for further data manipulation, you would select all of those fields and you would change those names. We'll change that to say list. And so all the values in this would be exp or would be read by HEADS as a vector. So I'm going to save my file now. And then I'm going to open up HEADS. This is the opening window of HEADS. And so first I must tell HEADS that I want to use the Excel portal for this analysis. To do that, I simply click on Analysis 1. And I choose from the drop-down menu portal, Excel. Doing that, then the next step would be to choose my inputs and my output files. So to do this, I right-click in the input file window, and I add input file. I choose the Excel spreadsheet that corresponds to my analysis and click open. When I do that, you'll see that the, the same name that's assigned to the input file is also assigned to the output file, and it does that automatically. And now, since I've already defined variables inside of Excel, I'm going to use the auto-tagging feature as I previously mentioned. Clicking on the auto tagging feature, you'll see here that I have a couple of different options, the answer and the list that I've defined. Uh, and in order to expose the X variable, I'm going to change from number below name to number right of name. And doing that exposes the X parameter. So I check that. Since I'm only choosing variables at this point, I'm only going to choose this X, the X value. And I'm going to click next. Then I can define my minimum, baseline, and maximum values for x, and I can click Finish. Once I do that, now I'm going to, sh I'm going to tell HEADS which responses I'm going to use for auto-tagging. And for that, I'm just going to use the answer response. Click on Check that checkbox and click Finish. So once I've defined that, I've told HEADS the files of importance, as well as done some of the auto-tagging, I have to go into the Parameters tab. And you'll see here that I already have X defined with the minimum, baseline, and maximum values, but I still need to define Y. So I'm going to right-click and add variable. I'm going to call that Y. I'm going to expose the details so that I can change these values, and I'm going to change the minimum to 0. The baseline was 1.75 or 0.75, and the max is the same as 1.25. You'll notice too that I already have my response created for answers. Once I've created all of my variables and my responses, next I'm going to go into the tagging tab. 
I'm going to choose my input file so that I can tag the Y variable. And you'll see here that the X variable associated with field B1 is already tagged. And I have Y selected in the variable dropdown. So I'm going to choose the cell that corresponds to the Y value, which is B2. And I'm going to choose tag. And you'll see too here in the bottom it says sheet1.b2 is the, is the cell corresponding to the Y parameter. Just to show you that the that the response has already been tagged, I'm going to choose the response field, and you'll see here how answer is tagged already. And again, sheet one B3 is the response. Once I have defined all of my variables and my responses, the next step would be to continue on to the study tab. For questions regarding the study tab and further, please consult the full demonstration video for heats. But before I let you go, there are a few other key features that I want to discuss about the Excel portal that you need to be aware of. So going back to the process tab, if we click on the Excel portal, you'll see a few features. One, if you happen to have macros embedded inside of this Excel spreadsheet, so if it's an, a .xlsm file, for example, uh, you can define whether or not you want the, the macro to occur before setting the variable values or after setting the variable values. And so to do that, you would just simply put the name of the macro uh, into the field. And if you happen to have more than one, you could separate them with a semicolon, macro two. And what HEADS will do then is it will execute the macro, then it will change the variables that have been tagged, and then it will read out the responses. If it happens to be after the setting variables, well then it will change the variables, execute the macro, and then after executing the macro, then it will read in the responses. The last two features to discuss are shown here with the checkboxes next to them in the middle of the screen. The first one to discuss is the show Excel application during study run. And what this means is that every instance that Excel launches, uh, the graphical user interface will, will come up as well so that the user can visualize what's occurring inside of the workbook. Uh, this increases computation in time significantly, uh, but it can be helpful for troubleshooting purposes. Lastly, the save modified workbook for each design feature is also available for, for activation. And what that feature does is, typically when HEADS is running an Excel analysis, it launches a single instance of Excel, and then it manipulates the variables and reads the response uh, in an iterative fashion without actually closing the Excel application. This offers significant performance increases over launching an individual instance of Excel. But the caveat to that is then you do not have a saved Excel workbook file for each individual analysis, which may be necessary for the user. If that's necessary for the user, then this checkbox here would satisfy that criteria. It would it would be would be able to save individual Excel files for each analysis. However, you would suffer a significant performance penalty. So that leads to the customer's decision whether or not it would be best to recreate the workbook file at the end of the analysis with only the few best runs, or if every single workbook file is needed, then checking that box is the is the best way forward that concludes the excel portal thank you